What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise. That is right, welcome back. We are easily having our best season so far of the franchise. Six and three here in the NFC East. And as you can see, every other team, including the Cowboys, surprisingly, are four and five. So we have a nice two game lead against some maybe a three game lead if we have a tiebreaker who knows but we do play the Dallas Cowboys in week 11 and actually just checking on the standings here seeing how the Sentinels are doing um so Ravens are best team in the league at eight and one we must be leading the NFC because yeah we are okay so the NFC not very strong right now but a lot of teams with the uh, three losses but as you can see the st louis sentinels sit atop the nfc right now currently above the panthers and we are just playing at a pretty much an all-time level here and uh some of the other teams that are doing really well the chiefs only two losses the chargers only two uh one loss as well of course we got three and then a bunch of other teams as well have three and i'm really happy with our team the way that we're kind of all gelling together and i will tell you what one guy one guy putting the team on his back like he's freaking greg jennings with a broken leg we got jj ford nfc offensive player of the week last week and i believe yeah so he won how many of these awards does jj have he won it last week he won it in week eight he did not dudley won it in week six okay that's cool and he also won it in week three and he also won it in week two so jj he has just been doing his thing second year man of course out of fresno state racking up these offensive player of the week awards with regularity and look at the king sitting atop his throne right now jj ford currently is first place in the running for league mvp Staring down at all the peasants below him. Patrick Mahomes, you're a peasant. Lamar Jackson, you're a peasant. Josh Allen, you're a bum. Joe Burrow, you're washed up. Dak Prescott, don't even get me started. J.J. Ford is currently first place in MVP. Wow, that is something right there. Let me tell you what. Of course, he leads the league in passing yards and also in passing touchdowns. And taking a look at our matchup today, we are playing the 3-6 Vikings so inverted record between us and the Vikings and they have a rookie quarterback here Pat Jupin and I was also issued a little challenge by one of my subscribers in the comments so shout out my man at Nick Green 5680 he would like to see me get our tight end Bart Burns involved in this game so I am definitely going to make our focus centered around the passing game for sure but I was issued a challenge to get Bart Burns to 10 plus catches 100 plus yards and also have a multi touchdown game so let's actually uh throw bart burns into the practice here and just kind of get a look and see what he's all about of course we already know what he's about but we'll talk about uh bart burns for a little bit so bart burns having pretty good season he's at 552 yards which is third place on the team he has six touchdowns which is tied for first place with terry and he also has 29 receptions which is also up there in the runnings as well of course superstar dev so he's got some abilities equipped and whatnot and uh i think we should probably in the draft get a backup tight end i mean we got logan thomas who i love he's a captain on this team he wears that c on his chest for a reason but bart burns is definitely tight end number one but i feel like we could probably have somebody behind him but bart has been playing at a very high level super super happy with his production and i feel like the sky is the limit for my man and speaking of bart burns we got a big upgrade for my man he is at 83 overall and what does he really need to improve on i mean blocking but that's not really bart's game i mean he's good enough for a tight end anyways i would say the route running so I think that we are going to go vertical threat possession. Yeah, we'll go vertical threat. I mean, that's probably the best upgrade for a tight end anyways. And he will go up to an 84 overall playing up to an 85. And there you see that superstar dev. So he's got his abilities equipped and ready to go. But uh, we are going to dive in here, guys. And I just want to say I am a bit under the weather. So hopefully I sound okay and the audio sounds okay. But 
If you want to be a champion, there is no days off, and the Sentinels are trying to be champions. We are going to be away from home in U.S. Bank Stadium in Minnesota, and if you guys are fired up for some more St. Louis content, please like the video, subscribe if you're not subscribed. I'm almost at 800 subscribers at 1,000 subscribers. I will do an NFL jersey giveaway, but without further ado, guys, let's get down to Minnesota and get ready for the game. And there is Pat Jupin leading his Vikings out onto the field. Pat is the rookie out of Michigan, second overall pick in the draft. So got to take a look at uh, his stats and see what he's doing. He was, you don't get picked second overall for a reason, but we're going to have to wait to see Mr. Pat Jupin out of Michigan because the St. Louis Sentinels are going to get the ball first to start this. We are on a two-game win streak, I believe. Looking to make it three in a row and really, really take dominance in this NFC East. And there is your current leading vote getter in the NFL for MVP. Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be something if J.J. Ford was able to win the MVP award in just his second season? Not sure if that's ever happened before. Somebody fact checked me down there in the comments if a player won the MVP in only his second season. And Jahan Dotson, oh, room to roam, room to roam. He was uh, getting chased down there but by Alexander Love, the two-year man out of Georgia, the middle linebacker. But Jahan was able to pick up 27. And I was definitely looking Bart Burns' way, but as much as I, I'm definitely going to try to complete that challenge to Bart Burns, but definitely not going to, you know, force feed him the ball if I don't have to. I will probably definitely look his way more than I typically would and uh, going to be looking Dudley's way too because Dudley is due for a big game. Lots of carries last week but not really a lot of yards to back it up and of course did not find the end zone either so we really want to turn that around. I mentioned it last week. I'm looking for Dudley to have one of those 125, 150 yard games. That would be awesome. We'll come out eye here, a little play fake, and see who wants to get open. That actually might be Bart. There we go. Bart, room to roam upfield. He picks up a big, big gain, getting the ball all the way down to the 14-yard line. And this drive is very, very good to start, and we are getting down the field in an absolute hurry. See if we can test the outside here with Dudley. Need a block or two, and, you know, just not really happening. Um, not sure if it's... You know, Dudley's, I wouldn't even, okay, I wouldn't call him struggles. You know, I wouldn't call him struggles as of late. He's definitely been playing not as well as he has in the past. But I, I don't know whether to necessarily, you know, put the blame on Dudley or the offensive line. Or maybe a combination of both. Oh, my God. And Bart, that was Bart. <laughs> Montez Sweat, by the way, who used to be on our team. The Vikings got Montez Sweat and Derek Forrest, who used to be on our team. But I just talked about Bart Burns blocking. He just didn't even attempt to set a block on Montez Sweat there. Meet the Vikings defense here. Montez Sweat, we traded the, traded him to the Vikings, I want to say last season. He's going to be the starting left end. Harrison Phillips is here. Cam Sample as well. And then defensive tackles, they got Puna Ford and they got Jaqueline Roy. So pretty good. You know, something to, uh, not anything to scoff at. Marcus Davenport, so definitely... They must be playing in the 3-4 here. And Jordan Brooks is their starting Mike Alexander Love, who is a two-year man out of Georgia. He was the fourth-round pick of the Vikings a couple years ago. They got Kingsley Enoch Bari, Packer in real life. And then cornerback Nathan Leach, the two-year man. Byron Murphy, uh, Bryce Hall. So their corners are pretty good. Derek Forrest, who again, used to be on the Sentinels. And J. Ron Curse is the strong safety. So not a... Terrible defense, you know, it's it's there's definitely some pieces there and a uh, revenge game, right? For Montez Sweat and uh, for Derek Forrest as well. So we'll have to see how that one plays out. But now we got some adversity, but maybe Terry can change that. Ooh, good coverage there. Good coverage there on the play from J. Ron Curse. And this is deja vu, I want to say, from last game. Good drive, getting down the field in a hurry, but ultimately going to be forced to kick a field goal but points on the board i will take it joey sly will boot that thing through three nothing on the scoreboard in favor of the sense and here comes pat jupin again second round pick in the 2025 draft out of michigan i mean not really playing like the second round pick right i mean we've you know 
Dak Wilson, okay. <laughs> he was a second-round pick, too, and we see how he played. But I don't know. Uh, I don't really put too much stock in the stats because literally anything can happen from week to week. We could be playing a bad team, and they could crush us. We could play a great team, and they could literally do nothing about nothing to us. And uh, Kareem Hunt, who is the running back, was took him a while to get dropped down, but Dante Fowler did ultimately get him. Of course, Pat Jupin just talked about him. Jacoby, Jacoby Brissett is the backup quarterback as well. Kareem Hunt and Kenneth Gainwell are the running backs. Nick Bowden is the fullback. Jay Jettas, no introduction needed. Jordan Addison, Caleb Henderson, who is a rookie out of Oklahoma State, and another rookie, Melvin Gordon, or Melvin Rowland, rather, rookie out of New Mexico State. He was a seventh rounder. They got Hawk, and that's about it at tight end. Offensive line, they got Derrick Saw, they got Ezra Cleveland, Garrett Bradbury as the center, Jalen Mayfield, and Brian O'Neill. So not the best offensive line. And uh, definitely Justin Jefferson is going to be the man to watch today. But we also see a lot of times these uh, tight ends carve us up as well. So got to watch. Also, Hawk and Jamin Davis almost got to Jupin. Need to see some sacks. Haven't really seen, uh, except for James Smith-Williams. I haven't really seen too many sacks this year. We almost had a big one there. We are going to guest pass here and shade underneath. Third and 10 for Pat Jupin and the Vikings. What are they going to do? Jupin just going to throw it out of bounds. I guess he was targeting Kareem Hunt, but that looked to be more of a throwaway. Again, this team is 3-6, and six, so not very good. They do have a couple weapons here and there, but overall, I feel like a beatable team. We said that about the Bucks last week, and they made it very interesting. So definitely can't get complacent and just got to play the ball that we know how to play. And I think here we're going to bring in Dwight Jackson. Uh, his dev trait, I don't think we're going to have enough snaps to reveal it, but I am going to try to get that uh, staff thing where it lets you reveal a dev trait. And Dwight Jackson picks up nine which is more than Dudley has picked up so far in this game. All right, Dudley, show him what you got. Um, I mean, look, that's what I'm saying, man. I cannot even blame Dudley Saxon at all because Michael Burton, our fullback, just had no interest in doing any sort of blocking on that one. It's like, you know, what do you do? What do you do if you don't have any blocks? You know, your fullback is supposed to be the lead blocker. He doesn't do anything, and the linebacker comes in free and untouched. So third and three, let's see if we can hit this screen to Dudley. Can't get it done on the run game, but he will get it done in the pass game. And nice juke, okay. Dudley is a dual threat weapon. Always good on those screens. He makes, he can make defenders miss. There's no doubt about that. He certainly can make defenders miss. Made a couple of them boys miss on that one. And we do get the ball to the 31 of the Vikings. Here's a good way to get Bart Burns involved. Coach is saying TE attack. And you guys know how much I love this play, although not really a fan of the coverage. I like typically rolling out on this one, but I don't think we're going to necessarily be able to do that. So let's see if Bart can catch this. He does, and he will get in. One out of two touchdowns complete for the Bart Burns Challenge. Just need one more, and he's got three or four catches now as well. So he's also getting up there in the reception department as well. And Bart and uh, Joey Sly going to make this thing 10-0 Sentinels. And we've just dominated time of possession. Vikings haven't really done anything. Let's see if we can keep the good times rolling here with our defense. Jupin coming out pistol here. We got a little bit of pressure. He is going to go to Kareem Hunt and Jonathan Allen. Doing Jonathan Allen type of things, getting TFLs. He has led the league in that category multiple years now. Jupin Shotgun now got a bunch to his right. Let's see if he can finally get something going. And I'll tell you what, this brother is not accurate. I'm not sure what his overall is or what his you know dev trait was, assuming that he had one. I didn't look uh, look at that pregame, but for being the second uh, overall pick, he's he's <laughs> doesn't look to be very good. And also his stats also back that up as well. So we'll see if he can do anything here. He's about to get sacked. And I mean, I don't know what's going on with Jupin and these Vikings, but they cannot do anything so far in this game. And I'm here for it. Bring in rookie Dwight Jackson here. Let him test the edge. And uh, is it just me or do I feel like the blocking is better for Dwight? 
No way, no way in Hades am I about to say that Dudley's going to be benched. Yeah, talk, talk, talk. That's right. That's right. And that's Derek Forrest, too. I don't think he's a happy boy right now. I do not think he's a happy boy right now. Um, but, yeah, no way am I even going to flirt with the idea of playing Jackson above Saxton. But just some, uh, just a little observation. As I say that, Dudley fumbles the ball. Dudley... You're not helping your case, brother. Third and ten, but they are pressing Terry. And uh, you know what? Go ahead and streak out Dudley Saxton. But this could be Terry on the quick shot. I'm going to go ahead and give him a chance. Kind of overthrown, but it's the St. Louis Savior. And J.J. Ford with a buck 52. And this is like the longest first quarter ever. I don't know about for you guys. I'll probably have edited a lot of this out. But, like, we're threatening to go up 17-0, and I feel like it should be halftime, but it's only the freaking first quarter. Yeah, I mean, is this Sentinels team just, like, goaded all of a sudden now? I don't know. Dudley, okay, with the vision, and, oh, Dudley. Dudley, Dudley, Dudley. About a millipede's pube away from getting into the end zone. We're going to go ahead and let this thing tick down to the end of the first, because this first quarter seems to have taken a very long time. But Dudley showing some signs of life. Sentinels playing amazing. I mean, what a disparity in yards, points. The Vikings literally have negative three rushing yards. Now, I know that seems like an insurmountable uh, lead for us and like complete dominance, but I never put anything past the Madden CPU because they can flip the switch in a second. Second and goal here. Let's see if Terry can catch this and hang on. And he does off the wide stick. And it's 17-0, and the Vikings have not even been able to amount a single yard so far. Not sure if uh, Kevin O'Connell is the coach here of the Vikings in Madden, but whoever their coach is, they better draw something else up. Ooh, Jonathan Allen almost got to Kareem Hunt. And the Vikings will, well, I was about to say, get their first, uh, first down of the game. But not even as Kareem Hunt was stopped mere inches away from the line to gain. But that was definitely the most and only positive yardage that the Vikings have gotten in this one. Let's see if Dante Fowler or somebody can get in the backfield. And you know what? Quarterback Pat Jupin not getting it done. So the coach is like, all right, we are going to go to Kareem Hunt and test this ground game. Seems like it's paying dividends so far. So let's see if our defense can kind of slow him down. And we'll see if Jupin goes back to Kareem Hunt again, which he will. Good block on the edge. And we're going to need to... Save the touchdown with Cam Curl. But what did I talk about? Madden CPU flipping a switch. I think the switch is getting flipped right about now. So right now, Kareem Hunt is the main problem. Let's see. This time he's going to go away from Hunt. But he does find Hawkinson. And Jamin Davis was there to get him. And it took a quarter and about two minutes for the second overall pick in the 2025 draft to get his first completion of the game. And now the Vikings finally got this ball into the red zone. So defense going to need to tighten up here a bit, put the clamps on. There is Hunt again, and he seems to be the answer for this Vikings team. Now at six rushes for 46 yards. So after going an entire quarter without a single yard, team-wide, mind you, Kareem Hunt now has 46 by himself. I mean, what's up with that? How does that happen? Jupin coming out shotgun now. Now Kenneth Gainwell is going to be into the game. So we'll see if he targets Gainwell and Pat Jupin, man. This offensive line, they're not that good, but they are not holding up for my man whatsoever. Let's send a little bit of pressure at the Rook here. Make him think about this. Jonathan Allen, I need you to hopefully get in the backfield. And nope, it's going to be Kareem Hunt. Because why wouldn't it be Kareem Hunt? He's about the only thing that this offense has going for him as of right now. And the Vikings trying to make it a little bit interesting here. So see uh, what the end result ends up being. I see Justin Jefferson over there. So definitely got to put a body on him. It's Kareem Hunt. And that time we do stop him. Thought that he was going to break Tony Knight's tackle there. But we do get him for no game. Justin Jefferson is the only receiver in here. So we'll see if it's a pass play or a run play. It is. Oh, it's a quarterback keeper and Jupin. Pat Jupin. Look, here's a stat for you. Get the stat sheet out. Pat Jupin has, in this game, as many rushing touchdowns as completions. And that's one. He's got one completion, but that was a good read option. Not going to lie. I, you know, and that's 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 good coaching by whoever their coach is. 
whether it be Kevin O'Connell or not. You pound the ball down with the run game, all drive. You get down to about the two-yard line. Of course, we're going to think it's a run, but nope. Quarterback uh, keeper on the read option ends up being six. Raw play to Saxon here on first down, and I like this defense too, so just got to try to find the blocks. And I'm going to actually hurry up to the line here because they are in a good formation for the run and uh, don't necessarily know if I want to go draw again, but apparently I am, and blocking is there for Dudley again, and I'm not going to cheese it anymore. I was just going with some mild cheddar on that one. Not going to bring out the sharp cheddar, but I'm trying to help out my man Dudley's stats. Come on now. Second and 10 coming out with some slants working, and just throw it away forward. Man, just like that, Vikings trying to make this thing interesting, so got to pick this up and also to side challenge as if one challenge wasn't enough I've also been challenged to not use my uh, once per game PA cross out of single back X bunch nasty so I will not be using that in this game it's gonna take every ounce of my core not to do it but I'm not going to do it George Williams you're 6'9 buddy I always say that <laughs> like I don't know I just like saying that he's 6'9 because like well, a receiver is 6'9", like that's crazy. So every time George catches the ball, I just feel the need to say, George, you're 6'9", but I also expect him to truck some people, and on that that time he wasn't. So first punt of the game, we'll see uh, if the Vikings make this a ball game or if that was just a one-off drive. Obviously hoping for the latter, but got to find a way to stop this man on your screen here, Kareem freaking Hunt. We're going to play good zone coverage here, hopefully. It's not going to be a run to Hunt this time. It's going to be a catch by, I think that was Hawkinson, but he was going in the wrong direction. So he actually ends up losing a yard on the play. And I think that's just Jupin not really leading his receivers the right way. So he's got three receivers now and Kareem Hunt behind him. He is going to find Justin Jefferson. First time we called his name and Jay Jett is breaking tackles. Don't want to get that man involved at all. We want to let sleeping dogs lie. Don't poke the bear. And Justin Jefferson just picked up 19 on that one. And uh, the Vikings like looking like an actual NFL football club now. Not looking like a peewee football team like they were before i need somebody to kind of watch kareem hunt on the outside here kareem tried to make some jukes but chase young stayed true to form kept good position and limited hunt to only a gain of three gotta watch mr jet is here but i also got justin hayward blitzing off the edge can he get home it's a little rpo to addison but we were there to stop him that's tony hoover our first round pick in this previous draft and now we got a chance to hopefully Get the Vikings off of the field. So let's just go ahead and guess pass. Shade inside here. Play some good defense, hopefully. Kareem Hunt, where are you at? Got to watch you. Jupin doing what he does best. Throwing the ball out of bounds. And going to punt it back to the Sentinels with 2.45 to go here until halftime. And you got to be freaking kidding me. They're going to bring out Will Lutz to attempt like a field goal past the logo. The longtime New Orleans Saints. He's got a leg, but I, oh my God, did he make that? Did he make that? I think he actually doinked it off of the crossbar and that went in. Wow, it did. Okay. Wow. Quite possibly the best kick I have seen in recent memory in Madden. That was like uh, close to a 60 yarder. I want to say it was definitely past the logo. Will Lutz is a very good kicker, did that for the Saints for quite a while, and makes it a 17-10 ball game. Ford and the boys coming out shotgun here, little bunch to the right, might have Bart Burns on the Texas route, which we did, but JJ over led him a little bit, I think he kind of actually got bumped on his route, is uh, kind of what it looked like to me. Coach is saying Dudley Saxon screen, and I actually like that because we got to make sure we keep this ball moving in keep the clock moving as well so hopefully Dudley can pick this up on the outside oh could not juke the defender there Jordan Brooks that had potential to be something and now what do you do do you take the clock down uh we are gonna take it down a little bit I mean definitely want to pick this up sure but gotta play you know conservative a little bit and think if we don't pick it up 
how much time is left on the clock. So third and nine, let's see if we can get this done with Thank you. Terry. He's true as always. JJ Ford, 11 for 16, two touchdowns and nearing the 200 yard threshold. And the drive does in fact continue. Terry got his X factor on. Would love to have Bart Burns have an X factor on. That would be swell. Let's give it to Dudley. That was nearly picked there by Nathan Leach. Tried to pass lead Dudley down and apparently that was uh, not the right decision. Almost in field goal range too for Joey Sly. So just definitely don't want to do anything to lose yardage. There's Curtis Samuel. I haven't called his name all game. It's the first time we've done that. He is playing great as our wide receiver at number two. Playing almost as good as Terry. And I realize where the clock is at. I'm cognizant of it. Do not worry. Well, uh, am I cognizant of it? Maybe I should have called a timeout. Instead, I'm going draw play to Saxton. Got to call a timeout now. I mean, it wasn't terrible clock management. Guess I could have had a little bit more sense of urgency. You know what? I'm going to bring Bart over on a drag if I can. Uh, depending on if that middle linebacker takes Samuel, which he is not. But I'm going to go to Bart anyways. Oh, my God. Almost made a heck of a catch. Got about time for one more quick shot. Coach is saying field goal now. Is that what we do? I mean, four seconds, probably. But, 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 I am a gambling man, that much is for sure. I'm trying to dial something up to get Bart. This has got to be a very quick pass uh, because if we don't get points here, that could be bad. Where's Bart at? Bart might have it, and he does. He hangs on. Part of the challenge completed there. Riverboat CJ taking the huge gamble. But Bart does have his multi-touchdown game. Got to be near in 100 yards. And we'll check on the receptions maybe after halftime. I mean, that was all Bart, too. Wasn't even like it was an easy throw. He had to protect himself from a big hit. And instead of settling for three, we are able to extend this to a 14-point ball game going into the locker room. Jupin will take a knee. 24 to 10 Sentinels. And aside from that, one drive... From the Vikings, I mean, I guess you could say the drive that ended in a field goal was decent. But aside from that one drive, I mean, get a look at the, the first half stats. They got 49 passing yards compared to our 210. And being up two scores, I would definitely like to just put my trust in Dudley. So we're going to go run inside and Kareem Hunt on the outside run probably is going to be my focus. Now, the Vikings do get the ball. First here, so got to come out with some energy and some firepower from the defenders so we don't let them creep back into this ball game. We're going to send some heat at Jupin here with Jamin Davis. See how he handles it. Well, it's Kareem Hunt, and he broke a tackle. Kareem Hunt, my running back on my other series, SFL. And if you guys haven't checked that one out, give it a look-see. It's pretty good. It's a different concept. I'm allowing my subscribers, so you guys, hopefully, if you're not subscribed, please consider it. But I'm letting you guys join the league as a creative player. And we're up to about 24, 26 maybe subscribers in the SFL. And I follow your stats. I play as a team. And also I relocated every team. So there's no current NFL teams. They're all made up relocated teams. But anyways, we are here talking about the St. Louis Sentinels right now. And there is Justin... Thought he might break that tackle, but Emmanuel Forbes was able to get it. But the Vikings do get a first down. We'll go man coverage here. Going to use her on Tony Knight and just kind of see what Kareem Hunt does. Jupin is sending Hunt over to his right, so it's not going to be Hunt. Got to watch him on the wheel route. There's Jordan Addison chased down there by Justin Award. But Jupin looking uh, the best that he's looked all game so far. I haven't had an interception in a while. I would really, really like one right about now. Jupin sending a man. Probably going to be a run play. It is. And there's Hunt making things happen. He might score here. Quan Martin had to chase him down. Kareem Hunt almost at 100 yards. And we just saw somebody. Who was it? Recently. Can't remember. You guys might. One, some running back that we played recently put up over 200 yards on us. Wasn't Javante Williams? I don't remember. But anyways, what I'm getting at is I don't want to see that happen again. 
it is going to be Hunt, but we might see that happen again. And Kareem Hunt actually scores. And wouldn't you know it, just in typical Madden fashion, I made my focus defend the outside run. I want to say every single, virtually every single run on that drive was an inside run from Kareem Hunt. How's about that? Wouldn't you know it? Typical Madden fashion. But as long as we bounce back and have a good drive on offense, we should still be okay. Hey, Terry goes over a thousand yards on the season. You love to see it. And still a ton, ton of football left to go. Let's see what Bart Burns needs to get his challenge completed. I know he has the multi-touchdowns already. He has needs six catches still. Should be able to get him over 100 yards. Six catches, it's definitely doable. But as I mentioned, you know, this game is a little bit too close for comfort now. So ultimately, and <laughs> I came out draw play and I literally have no uh, running back. In the backfield that's fun uh but we'll go ahead and auto bullet into streaks why not bart burns can we thread the needle we do look at the beautiful dot from ford okay that's what i meant to do yeah i meant to come out in a running play with no running back that's exactly how coach cj smalls drew it up all right dudley i need michael burton to lead the way for you got a little bit of a hole here on the left side dudley cutting up field there's a good run for my man. He is almost at the half century mark now. This time Dudley on draw. Let's see if, oh yeah, those defenders definitely drop back in coverage. Every time they go linebackers in the A-gaps like that, at least for the CPU, it's almost never a blitz. And uh, I'm definitely fine with that because Dudley ended up picking up a good positive gain there. And I am going to just continue going to Dudley for as long as I can. I think I'm going to motion over Logan Thomas here. See what that does to the line. Uh, gave us a little bit of a hole there. I can definitely work with it. And blockers are not there. No gain on the ground for Dudley. Man, I sure do wish Terry was getting pressed over there on the left side. He is not. So probably going to be looking for one of our tight ends. Logan Thomas open enough. And he actually might score. Gets very, very close. So down to the two-yard line. And this drive is going pretty much exactly how I wanted it to. Let's see, uh, maybe Dwight Jackson can get his, Is it? would it be his first? I don't know. I can't remember if he has a touchdown score on the season or not, but should be able to pick up two on the inside zone. Oh man, shouldn't have cut back to the right because I think that he would have had that. I mean, we gotta go sacks, right? Gotta go sacks. We got balls on the one yard line, got about uh, two chances to get this one in if we decide to go for it, which I probably wouldn't. But Dudley on the trap play, he gets in. Okay. All right. That is good. Having Dudley find pay dirt is always a good morale booster. And Lord knows, I think Saxon needs it. But a nice response for us. We do go over the 30-point mark, which we typically do, I feel like, in most games. But the question is, the Vikings seem to have caught fire on the last drive. Will they keep that, or can we put that puppy out? There's the problem, child, right there. Kareem Hunt, he's a good back. Don't get me wrong. I uh, live here in Ohio, so I am a Browns fan by default, and I always liked what he was able to do with us in Cleveland, and uh, we'll see if they continue to go to Hunt. I thought they were. That was a nice play. One second. Play fake. Oh, how did Jay Jettis catch that? Wow. Okay, that was good. We had Quan Martin out there, and Pat Jupin just now hits the 100-yard mark in passing. Kind of like a little dime blitz action here. That seems like a good idea. Can we finally get a sack on Jupin? It's close. Going to check it down to Kareem, but it's for no gain or maybe even a loss of one as Jupin now goes under. Yeah, they say a one-yard loss. So Jupin does actually go under 100 yards now, and we should hopefully... Be able to get the Vikings off of the field here. Going to definitely watch Kareem Hunt coming out of the backfield. It's not going to be Hunt. Will Jupin get sacked? He's close to it, and he is. And who else would it be besides our sack leader on the season? Mr. James Smith-Williams, the five-year pro out of NC State. Should not in any world really be our sack leader. I mean, we got Jonathan Allen. We got Chase Young. But he is our sack leader. 
And I just remembered we got to pay him and give him a new contract. And I would say that uh, he more than earned it. So we're definitely going to throw my man the bag. Got to get Bart Burns some more targets. He needs about five more, I would say. There's going to be one for sure. And Bart even has room to roam off of the mesh concept. So I think he's at six now. Possibly seven. Could be the last play before the end of the third. Need a good pull from our guard. And Dudley could have something here. There we go. Now Dudley's starting to turn the Jets on. And our rookie, Jarius Powell out of USC. The left tackle that was our second round pick in this past draft. He goes down with looks to be a ankle type of injury. I mean, you guys see it. Coaches saying TE attack. Bart Burns is always my primary read on this one. Although... I do see Terry getting pressed there as well. Um, we're just going to give a shot up to Terry. Might have overthrown him. We did. Third and 10 coming up here. At least we are in field goal range. Jerry's Powell will not come back in this one. If that right linebacker gets out of the way, Bart Burns on the in route could be the move. We're going to go to him anyways and just rolled out. Oh, no, 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 no. JJ Ford just got hurt. Don't know if you guys saw that. I saw it. Hopefully it's just a little minor bump and bruise. Um, or else Sam Howell is going to be coming in to play the snaps for Ford. Okay. Yippee! Ford almost want to just sub Sam Howell. I'll say if, if the Vikings don't score on this drive, I probably will bring in Sam Howell just because, I mean, it's already a 17-point game. Third quarter is about to be over. J.J. Ford's played great. So if the Vikings don't score on this one, I'll probably bring in Sam. Game's certainly not over, though, so got to play smart here and continue to play good defense. Not going to be Kareem Hunt. We're sending have. Oh, there's a pick. It's Emmanuel Forbes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This third quarter should have been. I feel like I just said this could be the last play of the third quarter. Could be the last play before the end of the third. And now the third quarter. Still 15 seconds left. I'm not going to sub out Ford quite yet. but Or you know what? Actually, I am. I am not going to risk Ford getting injured. The MVP, probably. Sam Howell played good for us. Uh, he's not even ready to come back yet anyways. So Sam Howell going to come in, get these next few snaps, probably finish the game out because I am not in the business of losing J.J. Ford for any length of time. Now, Saxon, if I can just give it to him... And let him milk this clock out. That would definitely be ideal. Still dominated by the Sentinels, man, in every category. I mean, even the rushing yards, even though Kareem Hunt has had a really good game, we are still out rushing him, if you can believe that. Um, now, ah, pistol dive with Dudley. That seems like a good idea to me. If we, again, it's going to come down to the blocking. Hopefully we can get it from Dudley. And that should have been Will Devlin blocking the middle. Luckily, Dudley was able to pick up six, and now defensive tackle Puna Ford for the Vikings goes down. So starting to see some injuries in this one. Let's see what Sam Howell's made of here. He played good for us in season number one, pre-JJ Ford era, and look at Bart. Oh, he couldn't hang on to it. No. Well, we're going to go up uh, 20, assuming that I knock this field goal through. And, uh, you know, we're in the driver's seat, sure. Right now, I would say my prime focus is kind of getting that challenge with Bart Burns, he's got over 100 yards. He's got the two touchdowns, but I think he's about three or four yards shy on the 10-plus receptions. And the Vikings passing offense is ninth, really? Really. Those stats that we were looking at pregame would determine that that is a lie. But apparently they are. Um, but I, they're definitely not today. That much is for sure. Justin Hayward. Oh, that could have been a pick if uh, Tony Hoover would have put his hands up. Really want to get him one because we had to do so much trading up in the draft to get him. And he's really been kind of a letdown this season, unfortunately. Um, but third and ten here, we'll see if Jamin Davis. I'm probably going to cancel the blitz and have him drop back as an extra defender and just an off-target pass from Jupin. He had Jordan Addison there. And, of course, they got to go for it. Like, what else are they going to do? There's not much else they can do. And we are just going to guess pass. We're going to shade inside. And hopefully just get these Vikings off of the field. TJ Hawkinson kind of uncovered there. I don't necessarily like that. And oh my God, what a grab from Addison. That was something. And that was on Kendall Fuller too, which 
can't say enough good things about him. Now, here in this situation, we're just going to press up and hopefully play some good defense. Our defenders are playing good, but Hawk is right there to pick up the first down. The Vikings staying with just a little bit of life in this one. I think it's man yeah, coverage again. Hopefully we can get somebody maybe in the backfield to get a sack. We haven't really seen too many of those, but it is James Smith-Williams again. Even when he is not making an impact in the sack department, he just always seems to be lurking there in the backfield. Third down here. What can we do? We're going to have Chase Young drop back as an extra defender, I think. And Jupin just go. Hey, nice field goal. It's good. Through the uprights. Obviously, Vikings are going to go for it here. I mean, they got no other choice, really, in this uh, situation. And I think I, I kind of trust man coverage again, although now we got to motion some guys around. I'm going to have Fowler be an extra defender, and it's another pick from Emmanuel Forbes. This could be a pick six. Do I take it with him? I mean, I'm going to. I'm going to. I got to give it to my man Forbes. He led our, he led our team last season in picks. Kendall Fuller leading our team right now in picks, but Emmanuel Forbes is creeping. Stick a fork in it. This one is done. Will we get the passing goal, reception goal with Bart Burns, though? That is the question. 344 here. Emmanuel Forbes got his third pick of the game. I cannot make this up. Now, smart person would just be trying to drain the clock here, but I'm not a smart person, and that was almost picked off there by Alexander Love. I'm really trying to get Bart Burns the reception goal here. It's like my main primary focus. Um, I should just be trying to kill clock, but I want to get it. I really want to get it. So we're going to at least try and see if we can. There's Burns. Let me actually check and see. That was a good, good way to fight forward to. What is Burns at right now? Because once I get it, I'm definitely going to just go into kill clock mode. So Bart Burns, what are you doing, brother? He has seven catches for 122. So he needs three more. And kind of like the problem here is also the coach is going to be suggesting a lot of run plays for me. So not quite sure if we're going to be able to get this. There's Bart. Catch number eight. And it's a first down. And he's hurt. No. That's what the frick I get. We also lost Jonathan Allen. I did not show you. I'm going to cut. It was just a long stretch of Vikings trying to do something. Okay. Well, I think we have our answer. Um, unless Bart Burns comes back. And honestly, I'm not even really... Yeah, it's it's over. He's not going to get to... Oh, why did I do that? I didn't mean to do that. And Bart Burns not going to come back. So, not going to get the gold, unfortunately. But I'm not even worried about that right now. As I am more worried about how long will he miss. And also Jonathan Allen, too. He, we lost him as well. So, could be losing some key guys here. This ball game is over. Yes, Dwight Jackson going to get the first down. But how long will some of those guys be out? That is the question. And that will be ball game. 44-17, utter dominance by the Sentinels. You know, I thought about, should I, should I up the sliders for the CPU? Like, make the sliders in favor more of the CPU? Because right now, I just got them on the default 50s. That's what I have been doing. But I'm kind of torn between that because, like, okay, this game was a blowout, yes. But in theory, it should be a blowout. We're 7-3. and three, They're 3-7. Three and seven. Our team is much better. So I think probably next week against the Cowboys. We'll see how that game goes and go from there. Now, Ford had a great game. Nothing new there. Still not throwing picks, which I love to see. But Pat Jupin threw three of those interceptions. And that was pretty much... The reason why they lost. Now, Dudley did okay. He ended up coming back there. Some of that yardage was in garbage time, but still good uh, yards per carry average. Kareem Hunt, great yard yards per carry average. And Bart Burns only fell two receptions short of the challenge. So, Nick Green in the comments, I tried, brother, but you can see we still did get Bart very much so involved in this game here. And Emmanuel Forbes had three picks. And James Smith-Williams had two sacks. So James Smith-Williams, I can't say enough about him. But let's see if we ended up losing anybody due to injury. Will Devlin, by, by the way, don't talk about him enough. Our two-year center now. He is superstar dev. Not anything really good that we can put on him. But still, that's something to keep in mind. We do have a superstar dev center. And also Emmanuel Forbes. We'll see if there's any new abilities 
he can unlock. He goes up to a true 84. So I don't think that there's going to be anything new. I got flat zone KO on him and I got on the ball as well. And yeah, none of the good ones. He needs to get to 85 man to man. We'll be able to get a little bit more pick artists. We'll definitely love to put that on Forbes. Oh God, man. My heart can't take this. Two new injuries. It's going to be Bart Burns and Jonathan Allen. It's exactly what it's going to be. No, it's not actually. Okay. So Bart Burns is still going to be here. But Jarius Powell, our rookie out of USC, the left tackle, he's gone four weeks, and Jonathan Allen out three weeks. That one does sting. And I'll tell you what, if you're still watching, beginning of next episode, I have 40 staff points. I am going to reveal the dev trait of rookie Dwight Jackson, the running back. I'm sure it's probably star, right? But you never know. And we will reveal that at the beginning of next episode. But... The uh, main thing is we got the W, so we do improve to 7-3, and three, and we got to take on the Cowboys, who are not having the best season. So that one should be a banger, banger episode. But without further ado, guys, or no, that's my intro. What am I saying? Look, I'm all discombobulated. That is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.